Hey, what's going on people? Vexim here. I'm with a very special person, Freddy. Go on, go introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Freddy, uh, Vision Network Manager. Yeah, he's been helping me out a lot recently with a lot of tips and also some uh, commentary skills as well as Joe. Basically, guys, this is a podcast. We're going to be talking about gaming and life in Britain. But basically, I've already had a pint of beer. I don't know about you, Freddy. <laughs> I'm completely sober right now, so this will be interesting. Oh, he's running sober. He's running dry, everyone. Donate, donate towards a pint. and <laughs> joke it. <laughs> Basically... One goes towards one, Fosters. <laughs> Fosters. All right, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what do you do here? I know you said you're the network, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, uh, basically, I just deal with anybody from the UK, any issues they got, uh, complaints, and also I help out on Joe's end with pretty much everything, you know, websites and uh, managing game servers. He's working hard, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, have you got a YouTube channel? <laughs> uh, no, I don't actually have my own personal YouTube channel. Uh, I've never really been, to, been into YouTube myself, uh, well, personally, anyway. After you guys enjoy this podcast, which we hope you will... I want you guys to tell us whether you think Freddy should open up his own YouTube channel. He's very good at Counter-Strike. He's actually told me a lot about the weapon skins and things like that. Because I'm one of them guys that just plays the game and doesn't really think about what I'm collecting. I opened up a load of my crates recently and got nothing but blues and reds. So I was really happy about that. Thank you for telling me to buy them keys. No problem. You All can right, probably so sell those for more money on the marketplace. Yep. But you know us gamers, we spend a lot of money <laughs> on things and we hope to get something. We didn't, we never get it until it's like one day you just get a crate and then um, you save up enough cash, you open up one crate and you've spent like £20 just on keys and then you get nothing and then you get that one key and you get like some uh, like £20 gun or something. So I, I, I'm honestly, I honestly dread every single time I go and get a crate. <laughs> I just, because I don't want to have to go buy the key, but it's just sitting there tempting me so you have to go buy the key. I know, man, that's a trap. Okay, so, I'd like your opinion. Um, I know you haven't played the Order 1866, but what... Do you think that the Metacritic ratings and the way the game has been perceived, like, through reviewers and things like that, do you think it's been judged fairly? I know you haven't played the game, but what have you heard about it? <coughs> well, mostly what I've heard is um, the fact that the graphics are unbelievably stunning, and I have seen trailers, I have seen uh, small gameplay videos, and... I do agree that the graphics on it are unbelievably stunning, uh, like up there with things like Bioshock Infinite and such. Definitely. Metacritic score, I think, might be a bit low. I mean, just because of the graphics and such. If you think of games like The Last of Us that got a ridiculously high score, that was mostly based off of graphics. Yeah, I mean, uh, me personally, uh, I am a fan of the studio behind it, and I, I'm not really hyped hyped for this game, but it is a game that I would love in my PlayStation 4 connect, uh, collection <coughs> as well as The Last of Us. I didn't really enjoy The Last of Us on the PlayStation 3. I played it all the way through, but it was just such a drag for me. I know I'm going to get a bit of flack for that, but I'm a big Uncharted guy, and um, I love the old school stuff like Crash Bandicoot. So, I mean, The Last of Us, so sometimes a developer, even though the game is a really good game perceived by other people, sometimes, even when you're a fan like me, it just it doesn't really click that well. But basically, um, I'm going to be getting the PlayStation 4 soon. Do you have a PlayStation 4, Freddy? Uh, no, I'm an Xbox guy myself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely got the best of both worlds in here. Um, yeah. So, what have you been playing lately? Well, recently I've really, really been getting back into CSGO, but uh, hard times, hard times, competitive matches, you just get stuck on one level and can't move off of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, as usual, Minecraft, can't get away from it. Yeah, you also do the, um, you look after the Minecraft service vision, right? Yeah, I make them, I run them, I develop them. A lot of hard work there, people. So, um, I've been playing CSGO as well recently. I opened up, uh, I think, two chroma uh, crates. I got a white, unfortunately. I got, I think, a uh. magma, uh, one of the light machine guns. And I was just like, eh, it's cool, though. But um, <laughs> I was actually playing competitive yesterday. I got about, like, in one match. And I know this doesn't sound amazing. He probably smashed me at that game. But I got, like, four or five kills um, all in the same round. And I was really happy about that. I didn't even have to camp for it. That was just... I just flanked them, like, right in the, you know, in office. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, that's what I love about CSGO, because you don't get that stupid, you spawn in and somebody spawns in behind you and kills you, kind of like the uh, Call of Duty franchise, where there's always somebody else to kill you. Mm. In, in CSGO, you've got that serious realism where, you know, you've got to use tactics, you've got to use your grenades, you've got to move in slowly, keep quiet. And it just gives that sense of realism, and it, it actually shows a level of skill rather than the ability to run around spraying with a 
assault rifle. Definitely. I mean, deathmatch casual. Don't get me wrong, that does happen quite a lot. But you know, that's casual. Um, that's more. That's more aim training, though. That's what casual and deathmatch are designed definitely. for. Definitely. I mean, that's why I played, you know, free for all, modern warfare. And then when I play with my clan, obviously we'd have to do competitive demolition, search, destroy stuff like that. I'm not relating Counter Strike and you know that, but it's definitely aim practice. So, um, you said you haven't heard really a lot about Bloodborne. I'm surprised. No, I've, <laughs> I've never actually heard that title before. Is that a new ISP? Yes, mate. <laughs> After this podcast, yeah, your homework for, <laughs> for now and next week is to check out Bloodborne, okay? There's a recent trailer that actually got released. Um, basically, I, f I believe it's the director of uh, Demon Souls. I've Platinum, Demon Souls, and uh, Dark Souls. Fantastic titles. Uh, you've played... Which ones have you played so far? I've played Dark Souls 2. Uh, not, okay. not, I don't actually own the game. I've played it uh, on one of my friend's computers. I've got to say, extremely difficult game, but very beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'll, it's all in the gameplay, mate, really. I mean, that's why I play it. It has got a beautiful art style in terms of the actual... Um, it doesn't just have traditional RPG elements to it. It actually has a lot of original Japanese you know, difficulty about it. And it's very sadistic. I like sadistic games. But uh, Bloodborne is uh, it's basically the guy who directed the Demon Souls, the first one, uh, has come out and they're making a similar game, but it's it's just... It's like they've they've added a lot. There's a lot of leaked uh, rumors and things like that. They've added things like um, you can actually infect players permanently until they actually die. Like even when they're not in the online uh, portion of the game. Like you know when you leave, you use a black crystal or something, and you exit out of a multiplayer session, they're still being affected by whatever you've done to them. Is it's pretty crazy what they're actually planning on doing. The actual gameplay itself, um, a lot of people are actually a bit. Uh, pissed off at the fact that it's not 60 frames but to be honest on the console side of things I've been so used to it running at 30 but I get why people are a little bit miffed at that especially since uh, it's our next topic Dark Souls 2 is coming out on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and that will be uh, running at 60 frames 1080p I believe well my, my uh, views towards people that complain about having like not 60 frames per second you are paying for a box that can provide you a service of high graphics, high speed, high function. 30 frames a second is still pretty good, especially considering the huge graphics uh, that many games of these this day and age require. You are paying for uh, a console, okay? It's, it's a compact PC. You're going to get what you paid for. If you want to be playing in 60 frames per second, either get a PC or a Mac, because some Macs do run 60 frames per second, believe it or not. But... Don't get a console if you're you're looking for high graphics and high speeds. It's just not going to happen. Definitely. Um, and with the Bloodborne, uh, I'm looking at some screenshots right now, and I've got to say it's, it's <laughs> visually stunning. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said before, I'm not I'm not a big visuals person. I never got into The Last of Us because of the fact it was just so many graphics and so linear. Um, but what you were saying about the whole you can affect players and it affects them later, that kind of idea of procedural um, events changing the overall gameplay of somebody else's game. That is really appealing to me. That's why I like things like Skyrim and uh, Firefall. That's a brilliant example. Yeah. Like, uh, have you played Firefall before? No. So it's it's basically a free-to-play game where um, you have to kill these kind of alien creatures. But the thing is, the more you kill, is the more the map unlocks for other players. And you can actually rescue other players' cities that have been like, cut off from the capital. And it, it's all real-time. Um, war basically and you have to fight AI and it, it's it's really really good looking game I'll um, have to check that out yeah so it kind of reminds me of the features like that where you can just affect somebody else's gameplay in such huge ways that is an appealing idea to me yeah I mean I really did enjoy the um, like people don't get it twisted I, I love consoles I have my PlayStation 3 very close to me right now um, I hopefully will be getting the PlayStation 4 around April uh, period but um, yeah like I really <sighs> I played Dark Souls, I modded Dark Souls with Dragon Crest PC, big shout out to you good sir. He actually got featured in the GameSpot article, um, I, did, I helped him a little bit with what he did, but uh, basically um, he made the HD texture pack and made a really awesome uh, sweet effects preset for that game. It's all on his channel, he's very helpful to uh, other like PC users, but I've seen it, I've witnessed it, and it's fantastic what the modding community can do, and um, don't get me wrong, the reason why it puts me off playing multiplayer on um, on the PC is something that happens across... It happens on every game, no matter what platform you're on, but on the PC, um, I will admit there's a lot of trainers and things like that out there. Like in, They give you invulnerability, 
and they don't really keep an eye on it because Dark Souls was actually running on uh, Games for Windows Live, which I believe now has gone down. Am I correct? Uh, I'm pretty sure that has gone down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so was Resident Evil 5, I believe, and 6. But, you know, it it was uh, legitimate for the most part, but I did get rather annoyed when I was hoping to get into a legit uh, PvP session, because I do enjoy <laughs> PvP a lot on the, the Souls games. Um, so Dark Souls 2 coming out for the PlayStation 4 is definitely a must-buy. Um, they haven't just, you know, upscaled the resolution. It actually looks really nice. They haven't remade anything, but it's almost like it's running on a really nice Sweet FX or EMB preset. And I think it's cool that it's coming out for the PS4 and Xbox One. It's not just a money grab. I believe there's a piece of DLC that comes included as well. Um, so it's going to look good on both the Xbox One and PS4. I've seen there's also a comparison on, uh, I believe, IGN.com that has a, a cross-comparison between like the PlayStation 3 version um, and the upcoming PlayStation 4 version, which I'm not sure about the release dates, people, but I would definitely go and buy that if you haven't played Dark Souls 2 yet, or even if you have and you're like me and you rather enjoy PvP and co-op on a uh, on a console, because I definitely do myself. I love the consoles. I've, I've never actually played the PvP on Dark Souls. I hear it's a, a very... Uh tactical game i've never actually seen any gameplay of it but, yeah um... i mean imagine this it's like metal gear online back in the day players know when you slip up and players it's like i'm actually quite thankful for the fact that they didn't include a microphone chat system in the game because uh like even on the 360 if you went into a multiplayer session whether it's car or pvp i believe they actually close you out of a party chat um from the console itself and i kind of found that interesting because uh, i think that when you have a game that plays so well, such as Dark Souls, players don't really need to communicate through voice. It's not just the cheating aspect in, in terms of co-op, like, oh, by the way, there's a secret over here. I actually prefer seeing what um, another avatar is doing, and actually, it really immerses you into what you're actually doing. Because when you, t like, it's like I'll never play a single-player game and speak to someone on the microphone, because it... The artists and all the people in, that made the game want me to 1v1 one 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 the game, you know? It's like a one-to-one -one experience. Yeah. That's what it always should be like. I'm pretty sure that, like, that is going to get developed a lot more in future time, like, times just because of things such as the Oculus Rift being developed. The le level of immersion is going to be increased, and you're going to need, need less and less virtual communication and more in-game direct communication, like uh, hand signals and such, which we have been seeing with, uh, like, the uh, razor, oh, I forgot what they're called now. You know the joystick razor things you can use on, with your hands and they move in game. Yeah, I've seen it briefly. Yeah. Yeah, those just uh, it gives you a whole other level of immersion. And something else that you mentioned earlier about how they're moving it over to PS4 and uh, Xbox One, I find that extremely impressive on the developers' part because that entire game was developed in Linux, which to to convert it from Linux to like something on a platform that would be able to work. On like a PS4 and Xbox One, I'm not completely sure what the PS4 runs. I know the Xbox I think it's One. Think it's OpenGL, mate. You know. oh, it's OpenGL. Yeah. But even then, it's it's ridiculously hard to divert, change a game smoothly and mm -hmm. remain all of the high-level graphics that it does contain that yep. fast. All the multiplayer like, scripts, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you. It's nearly been a year since Grand Theft Auto 5. It has been a year since Grand Theft Auto 5 was released, actually, and they still haven't even released it on PC, and it keeps getting delayed. Yeah. It's just, which I wanted to actually you. talk to you about that, yeah. It just shows you how much time can go by just to convert a game. Yeah. I mean, it's not as if they're... I mean, I'm, I'm glad that they're not rushing it. I was a bit annoyed uh, the last, you know, delay that happened, which was recently, because, honestly, I was playing it at my friend's place on his 360, and I loved the game. I think, I'll, you know, when I played Max Payne 3, which is another Rockstar title, if you guys haven't played that, make sure you go and play it. It doesn't matter what the platform is, hopefully on PC. But when I played that on uh, PlayStation 3 originally, I think it was running at like 720p, and then I played it on the PC, and back then I was running uh, 460s and SLI. It was a lot better. It was like a whole new game. And they did such a good job on the PC version of uh, Max Payne 3. There was, at first it was a bit glitchy, but the few updates that came out like a month or two after, and especially if you're running it on in videos, it was really nice. Things like tessellation, get you know, you get to see all that on the PC version. It's not like the console versions are bad. I think that the console versions, uh, I was really shocked because, like I said, I played Max Payne 3, and then when I saw Grand Theft Auto 5 and the texture sizes, I was like shit they really did go ahead with the uh, optimization in here 
and it was really well optimized and I was so shocked that the depth of field and everything was running as even though it was very clunky I was surprised that it was even running as smooth as it was on both those platforms see if I'm not mistaken I think I might be mistaken here but wasn't Max Payne 3 uh, the conversion of PC wasn't that juggled around between a couple companies for a while yeah like I said when it first came out um, a lot of people's like, you know, I think the 580 and all that stuff was out around about that time. So a lot of people, you know, that updated to the 600 series and stuff. It's kind of like Tomb Raider with Square Enix. When that game came out, people that were running NVIDIA cards, it was just shit. It was terrible. You know, people were running 680s, they were getting 40 frames a second with Tress FX turn off and things like that. So it took a little while, but once they, they, um, they you know, they did that... It runs really well. Like if you play it right now, it's, it's gorgeous. So I understand why they delayed it. Definitely, Grand Theft Auto Five. Um, uh, the first person feature they've just added to Grand Theft Auto Five that hugely impresses me, um, because uh, I think that uh, they are adding Oculus Rift support for the game when it comes out on PC. Jesus. So it looks almost realistic if you put a headset on, and I I'm kind of scared where it gets to that point where games are so good looking where you might forget you're in an Oculus Rift? Yeah, I mean, it's like I did games cultures at uh, London South Bank University, and I left it after a year. But what I did learn is, um, like, I think a lot of games are losing their narrative structure. Like, there's games games, like Rayman Origins and things like that, and then there's The Order, Order 1866, where things are just getting a bit... It's not the realism in the graphics, it's, it's more like the realism in the story, it's, it's getting a little bit lame, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, uh, it's lacking. I think it's, it's mostly because of how linear it is. Mm. With really, really successful games, you tend to find that they have something so different that it makes the, the level of immersion not like, a, hey, this game seems realistic, but almost like, a, wow, this is like a fantasy dream that I could actually imagine existing. Uh, which which is partly reason that games such as like Fallout um, and uh, Borderlands, those games were so successful because you know Fallout nobody had ever seen an environment like that before, and with the Borderlands, again it was just an environment that nobody had seen before, and the the, the storyline and the graphics they weren't they weren't realistic, but they they had that sense of realism about them, you know, mm. which which gave the uh, the players just so much more immersion, so much more more gameplay. Um, for themselves to like enjoy rather than games like the order 1886 where they're just focusing on hey guys we've made this good looking game come play it yeah i mean i, I think it's uh, i think the whole five hours thing was a bit crazy i mean i think it, it came out um that the guy that's playing it was actually uh either speed running it or playing it on easy mode which I, I mean i wasn't really bothered about the length of the game i mean it's like going to a movie would you rather see even though Lord of the Rings is a fantastic movie franchise, um, I'd much rather see, like, you know, a Will Smith movie or something that's, like, just over an hour long, and you just, it's a great experience from start to finish. I'm one of them kind of people, but I do appreciate a long-running film, you know? Yeah, um, I'm personally, I think, like, you get what you pay for, right? Mm. You have to think of it on their end, okay? Think of the graphics, how long it's taken to make that game, what it's cost to make that game, and and then well, if you enjoy it, well, there you are. Money well spent. If you're one of those grumpy people that are like, oh my god, I didn't have enough enjoyment with that. I didn't. I paid so much money for that. Well, then should have looked up reviews. Should have seen the game beforehand. You know, it's, it's, it's your own fault. Don't complain about the length of the game if if uh, it, it's too expensive for you anyway. It's, it's your choice, man. You know, yeah. don't complain about it. I mean, it's like back in the day, the you know the developers you couldn't really show us graphics that much. They, you know, like Final Fantasy VI to Final Fantasy VII. You know, fair enough, they went uh, into a 3D, um, you know, like Super Mario and stuff. They they went into uh, the 3D dimension and everything changed, but the games were still like uh, really long for what you know. You can com you can even complete that game in like 30 hours, or you can actually grind it out and spend 60 to 100 hours. And I kind of like that, but it's really hard to do that nowadays with today's games and the way the technology is running, you know? Yeah. Um, another thing that causes the gameplay just to get shorter and shorter and shorter is the fact that games are becoming longer and longer and longer to make. Yeah. Like, you see certain uh, developer companies, uh, the smaller franchises, making longer and better games 
because generally they're not as complicated as more expensive games like what Rockstar are producing or uh, companies like uh, 2K. 2K have been producing a lot of games. But if, if you compare them to something like Telltale, brilliant games, absolutely unbelievable. I would buy every single Telltale game if I could. But it's mostly down to the fact that they're, they're cheap, easy, and quick to make. And they're really immersive and you can just in, get in and enjoy them. Mm, definitely. And I think um, I think the value, um, I, I don't know, it's almost like if these games came out like before the PlayStation 3 did, I think people wouldn't have complained as much. But we live in a generation where, um, and it's, there is good points to it. I mean, it's like when Microsoft was going to release, you know, the, they have released the Xbox One, but when they first released the console and, you know, they had the E3 performances, it just goes to show like how much things can change just for an opinion of a lot of people. Um, which it's weird because back in the day, like with the Nintendo Gold Seal of Approval and things like that on their exclusive games, and Nintendo still makes absolutely fantastic first-party exclusives, in my opinion. Um, you know, back in the day, you'd buy a Sony TV. You couldn't really go online and moan and stuff. You had to rely on buying it and bringing it back home, and it worked. And um, even though Skyrim is a very good game, I wasn't very happy uh, when I had a place. Well, when I was playing on my PlayStation 3 a lot more that they released the game so not only not optimized but some of my friends like you jump in the water and then the whole game would be frozen and even though they blame the hardware which i didn't understand because games like infamous uh you know infamous 2 uh, look fantastic and have the same kind of level of geometry i didn't really understand why they you know <coughs> still went went ahead and released it i wasn't very happy well you know when it comes down to stuff like that i mean bethesda I'm ashamed to say it because they are my favorite developer company, but they they had a huge part in the... They basically made most of Skyrim. I mean, they had help from other companies, of course, because a lot of the graphics engine wasn't done by them. But um, Bethesda, uh, basically, when they optimize their games, I they kind of do it for the cash, okay? Mm. And it's kind of bad to say, but Skyrim was one of their like big saving products. If it wasn't for Skyrim, they probably wouldn't be developing as many games as they are to today. Um, yeah. And the fact is, they are a PC company. They design their games for PC. Uh, I don't think they've ever made a console exclusive. I don't think they're intending to. But, you know, there are different parts of the companies that do, do this optimization. And it kind of annoys me when people do go ranting on, complaining about optimization, when... The bottom line is, it's not the company's fault, it's just that section of the company, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they, they kind of release it, uh, with the amount of the modding community, they kind of release it um, so that it it works on the PC, but then it's like, you you, you kind of want to have mods running in any way, you know, not just from the fun aspect. So really, the modding community, a lot of people... Um, it's really a weird circle, because they've got these, this amount of people that... They kind of seem ignorant because of what they're saying, but I get what they're saying. They're saying, like, the people that mod games and, you know, save the developer's reputation um, are the ones in the wrong. Like, the more you help the developers do what they were supposed to do, the worse it gets. But at the same time, you know, don't you want to see all these mods come out? Well, yeah, I mean, modding is something that is growing hugely, especially with things like Steam Workshop. That is hugely opened up the uh the modding community yeah i mean if, if you look at like games like fallout or uh i think tf2 is pretty big for the modding community because not only are modders now being rewarded for making stuff because you actually get paid for making the, yep. uh, workshop items and such oh gary's mod that's the biggest one um but the fact is that's just opening so many doorways because you're getting less of like uh, bad games remaining bad sometimes you're finding the modders making the game so much better that uh, like two years after it's released they're being like giving awards and such because that the mods have made the game so much better mm. and, and I you... definitely think it keeps the game alive a lot more yeah it's like uh, you know I mean developers are always busy I mean we don't know what Valve is doing hopefully they're working on Left 4 Dead 3 and all the other good stuff but um Half-Life 3 yeah, <laughs> I'm never gonna happen. I, I I really have to um, play more of that, but uh, more of the Half-Life series. But basically, it's like CS:GO. If you look at it, like 
even the original CS is still being played by quite a, a lot of people and being live streamed. And there's no, you know, ADS or anything like that. It just goes to show that, um, you know, the passion in the community. It's not because they haven't got a lot of money for other games. I mean, Counter Strike Go is like still about a tenner, right? Yeah. Um, it, it really isn't that much. I mean, to be honest, Valve games are next to nothing. Something I love about Valve is they are one of those corporations where instead of thinking about, hey, how much money could we earn, they think about, hey, how much money can we spend to make something that's amazing? Yeah. Because they make games and think about how the player's going to enjoy them rather than how long the player's going to spend on it and how much money they're going to earn from it. If you, if you look at games like Counter-Strike Go, um, the turnover has been huge. But that's just down to the community, mostly. I mean, it's not even down to Valve. They, they've just supplied the community with the means to pay Valve back for pr producing this awesome game. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so is there any topics you'd like to bring up or talk about? I mean, uh, do you want to talk anything about British politics or what's going on in Britain right now at all? Or in well, Kent? <laughs> Oh, in Kent. Well, you know, they uh, they fixed some potholes the other day. <laughs> oh my, me and my dad hate potholes. We have a lowered car, so every time he goes over one, it's it's Hell. just yeah, like especially on the coilovers, like it's just it's horrible. We're like the strut's okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man. No, uh, the country's I... gone really weird. Like um, all the riots and things are kind of calmed down a lot. Uh, that was pretty serious. I was actually, I think, three miles from where, like, uh, where it happened in, like, Croydon and places. Even where I used to come from, you know, like, Abbey Wood, Thamesmead, around there. Like, they were going mental in Woolwich. Oh, yeah, fuck Woolwich. That was horrible there. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, my brother was near there at the time, and he was just, he was laughing his tits off because it was like, <laughs> it was like watching um, a swarm of ants run away from, like, a, a shoe when the police arrived. Oh, God. I mean, but, uh, it, it, you get people running up the stairs like, "Oh, mate, do you want to buy a 3D TV, 200 pound right now?" <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm really upset with the British politics at the moment because I don't want to vote for anybody. They're all terrible. I don't think I'll ever vote, even if I, they try and force me. Because you know what? What is, I mean, come on, what is my vote? What am I voting for? Like, I don't even think about the government. I don't think about the Queen. I don't think about nothing. That's one of the things I actually enjoy about this country. It's kind of we are united, like in the way of you know, we have a lot of different governments and things, but I just feel like I feel like people should start living their own lives. You know, pay your council tax or any of that bullshit. But a lot more people shouldn't really get much into this politics stuff because at the end of the day, whether we're Labour or Conservative, it seems ever since I was born and what I've seen, it, you kind of get screwed over in different ways with different parties, you know? Yeah. See, I, whenever I... Just recently there was a news report about... Um... I think it was one of the foreign advisors. He he's been earning fifty-seven thousand a year salary uh, for doing speeches and like smuggling certain things into the people into the country and such. Mm -hmm. On top of um, his sixty-seven thousand a year that he gets from being a PM, uh, not wow. a PM, yeah, an MP, sorry. And he says he can't live off of that. That's that's not enough money. <laughs> when you get people living on benefits with like less than sixteen k a year with three children to support for, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and they're saying they can't live off of it, and we're letting them run our country. Did you know we've never had a prime minister that, that didn't go to private school, apart from Winston Churchill? Wow. No, I did not know that, mate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it's it's like... Uh, I don't know, it's like every time James Cameron... Uh, David Cameron... Um, James Cameron. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Whenever he leaves the bloody... Uh, Whenever country. he leaves the country, there's a riot or some crazy shit comes on. He comes back and he's like, I'm really pissed off, all right? I can't believe you lot did this. <laughs> he's like a teacher. I like, leave the country for 10 days <laughs> and there's 3D TVs outside the front of my house saying I owe you. Oh, man. I mean, right. it's like, it's kind of peak, man. I mean, look, look at the job centre. Like, five years ago, everyone's like... Get kids, you know. Every, you know, I don't blame them because a lot of jobs, like for example, for what I want to get into, even if I do get my job, I'm not going to be earning anything over twenty five thousand starting salary. And I mean, it is. Uh, there's a lot of other jobs that are hard work too, but games design is really hard work, and you you just don't have a life. Like even year three at university, you just 
yeah. you don't get no free time. And I don't mind general jobs, but I just, I mean, I believe minimum wage has gone up to six pounds forty-five, isn't it? I think it's six fifty now. Wow. Well, even that ain't good enough to live on, you know. You think, yeah, you know, six fifty or whatever, and then it comes up to the end of the year, and you you estimate it all that. It's not even like sixteen k or whatever. See, uh, my issue with the the government at the moment is, you know, I'm not, I'm nowhere near a socialist. I'm I'm pretty pretty centered on the political scale here. Like, I know socialists, I know conservatives, I know, I know a whole array of people. And I'll be honest, I think that most of the time they're all just arguing about each other's parties rather than what we should be getting, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not be, it's not ever being like, hey, I wish our prime minister was this. It's more like, hey, I wish my prime minister was that, not yours. Yeah, that is but, true. But um, it, it, all of them, they're all just, you know we'll give you what you want as long as you vote for me it's never hey we're a people person you want something sure we'll think about it and we'll we'll get it done you know we will lower the taxes we'll lower our wages because you know about 1.2 million a year goes just to paying our government <laughs> yeah to make decisions that we're unhappy with that comes from our taxes yeah i mean the thing as well is it's kind of like my internet company you know it's like we, at the end of the day, it's, I mean, as much as I, I don't really like the police all that much or whatever, but it's kind of like we are all humans at the end of the day, but sometimes us being human does what, like, you know, like you said earlier with the whole, um, you know, the guy earning an extra wage packet, you know, for doing things on the side, you know, and, and, and then complaining about not having enough money to live. I mean, if I was on that, you know, my YouTube channel would probably be really blooming right now. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, is there anything else you want to bring up? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, just a couple things. Um, remember, recruiting, okay? Vision Network. If you recruit, you can get, like, quite a large portion of the money that your recruitee earns. I really recommend doing it. You get uh, something in return, and on the, on, in the end, I mean, it really doesn't take that much effort just to, like, ask your friend, hey, join this network. Yeah. And the benefits, they're high. You get loads of good stuff at Vision. Apart from that, I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, I mean, I've been with, uh, like, big shout-out to Joe McClung, of course. He sent me a Logitech G35 headset and a Logitech uh, C615 webcam, which does 1080p 30 frames recording, um, which I will be uh, doing my own show on this channel. And the reason why I want to do these uh, shows is not only because of the sponsorship deal, but also I really like the fact that this network really does interact with the partners. We don't just sign people up. I mean, I... This is just what I've noticed. Um, even on TNG, when Joe was uh, in charge of some of the things, we don't just sign people up and there you go. I mean, you can do that, but we also offer you support lines such as a Skype group, um, very responsive email process, and even with Freedom itself, um, Freedom has really improved ever since it started off, and it's become so big now. But you know, even as a sub network, we are we are growing. But what we want to do is try and get all of our partners. Um, really communicating with each other and you know supporting each other. It's like I've made a lot of uh, Photoshop banners and things like that for people. Um, most I've actually asked people if they wanted banners done because I've taken a look at their channel and I, it's not like their channels are bad or anything. But I was just like, I was just trying to help them in the way of you know if you do all this and get all your thumbnails looking like this and you know all all con um, all very similar. It would look like your own brand, and I really like helping people. You know, when I, especially when I'm not making videos myself, that's what I'm normally doing. And that's what I like about Vision. It's all, it's all, it's like one big family. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. I've always despised YouTube now, specifically Machinima, I mean, just general hatred. But I, I have to admit that Vision, it, it kind of just, uh, it kind of is just so different from what other people offer that it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you wanted to go talk to a, a manager at somewhere like Machinima, you'd have to put in a ticket. You'd have to wait seven weeks. You'd have to contact like staff members first and arrange a meeting, yada yada yada. With Vision, you just go on Skype chat, ask for a manager. Ten minutes later, you got a manager and you call cool answering your issues directly, and they can sort shit out like instantaneously. Yeah, and the way Vision grows is, um, you know, we get more members that you know people that just sign up for the network, but at the same time, it's escal it's um, approximated in a good way of having actual people either employed or volunteering to uh, do things like what you're doing for example 
you know, and helping each other grow. You know, we don't just get just get members in and keep the same amount of staff. You know, because mm. I, I noticed with a, quite a lot of networks and some quite close to us that I won't name any names. Um, but they tend to just be like, hey, we'll give you all this cool shit if you just join us. And they're all about getting people to join, but they never really keep their promises once you're in the network. They just kind of ignore you and let you fester whilst you sit there earning barely anything and having issues that you you just can't get answered because the support's too low, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, I hope you guys did enjoy this podcast. Uh, this is our first podcast, so... You know, we will be improving each week. I'm not sure about the exact day of the week that we'll be doing it. We're British, we're wild, we're crazy, we're we're drunk, we're tea and crumpets, whatever stereotype you give us. <laughs> but I hope you did enjoy this show. Uh, do you want to shout yourself out, Freddie? Uh, yeah, just uh, like, comment, subscribe on this video because it helps me in the long term. Um, and remember, if you've got any topics that you would like us to talk about or discuss in the next episode, just leave them in the comments below. And... Uh, Remember to subscribe to Vexium. Remember to subscribe to uh, any with links in the description that we put that we might have mentioned in the podcast. And uh, have a good day. Yep. Thank you for watching, people. Peace out. Peace.